Hello friends, I'm Colonel Failure, and in today's 5 Minute Masterclass, we're going to look at the Sandbox Mode mod. The good thing about this mod is that you can choose to use it when you are starting a new game, or even on a game that's in progress. One word of caution though, if you add it to a game that's already in progress, you will no longer be able to earn achievements from that game. So if achievements matter to you, I'd advise you not to do this. So first up, you have to go to the Load Game option, and then select the game that you want to load, and hit the plus key over here. This will show all the mods that are available to you at the time. When first loading the game, you will have three mods, all of which come from Urban Games directly. No costs means that nothing in the game costs you anything at all. It is perfect if all you want to do is build something glorious and you don't care what it costs. The Vehicles No End Year mod means that every vehicle that's ever introduced to the game, it doesn't have an expiry date, so you can continue to purchase steam trains late into the 20th or even 21st century. We're going to be looking at sandbox mode though because it brings a whole bunch of extra functionality with it. Make sure the green tick is enabled over here and then hit start. So we're here on my test mode map where I'll show you some of the basic functions that can be achieved by using the sandbox mod. Fundamentally, the difference between playing in sandbox and playing in no costs mode is that the sandbox gives you a great deal of power over how you shape your world, how you shape your map, but it still makes you largely accountable for making a profit. If you can't keep the cost of running your network under control, you are going to run into difficulties. Whereas with no costs, Nobody cares about costs at all. So the first part of the mod is arguably the most useful, as it allows you to give yourself as much money as you fancy. For those of you familiar with the Pork Barrels mod, this is that, but built into the game. To top up your account, head into the account balance at the bottom, click on the number, and then you can edit it to be whatever you like. So if you want it to be a billion dollars, stick in a one and nine zeros and then you have a billion dollars. If you then want to set the amount back to a realistic number, you can do that. There's nothing to stop you putting a positive or negative amount in your account. Adjusting your bank balance in this way is jolly helpful if you've got lots of things to do as far as adjusting the terrain, because terrain costs can be extraordinarily expensive. By using the flattening tool, for example, even drawing it in a straight line like this, I've burned through a hundred grand in a matter of seconds upping these to their maximum power, and you'll get through millions in no time at all. Once you've hammered your way through the landscape a little using your unlimited bank account, you might decide that what's really needed is an extra town. Well, that couldn't be easier. The town button here will allow you to place a town anywhere you like, anywhere on the map. Obviously, if it can't place that town because the landscape is not possible, it will give you a friendly little warning message on a friendly little red background. It's also very friendly. You have the option to crank up the size that you want the town to be, and to make it focus on whichever goods types you like. So you can select the preference that it has in both commercial and industrial. When you're ready to place the town, you just click. And over the next couple of seconds, it will draw out the town and the associated streets for you. More usefully for those of you planning on building mega cities, you can build one town directly on top of another one. Obviously, you're going to need some space in there, but even then, it's not going to hold you back too much. As you can see, we've just installed Wokingham and Red Ruth pretty much on top of one another. So for those trying to build some kind of urban network, this is a good way to get your population up before deploying your infrastructure. You could then treat each separate town as effectively a suburb of one major city. The same thing is true of industries. If you decide you need an additional industry somewhere, no problem. Uh, you can select it from this menu here, which is at the bottom, and uh, knock yourself out. Go wild. I need an oil refinery, because everybody likes living next to an oil refinery. Let's have it. Now, these have costs associated with them, but as your bank account is constantly being topped up, who cares about costs? You also have the ability to upgrade industries that are already placed. To do so, select the industry and hit the configure button. 
You can then tell it to up its production level, to no longer accept raw materials, or to turn off the auto upgrade. If you want to keep it at the smallest level for as long as possible, you now have the option to do so. The same is true of towns. Now, when I placed Red Ruth and Wokingham, I omitted to set what type of industrial good they'd like. We can fix that now. Click on the town name, then head into the editor, and then you can change the thing that they're desiring. Between the ability to add yourself extra funds anytime you need them, the ability to add new towns, and the ability to add new industries and then edit them to suit your own purposes, sandbox mode really does give you a whole slew of extra options when playing the game. I've been Colonel Failure. If you enjoyed this short introductory tutorial towards sandbox mode, why not subscribe? I'm going to try and go through every feature there is in the game, and these are geared both towards existing players and new players alike. Thanks for watching. Cheerio!